What's going on guys? Thank you for joining us here at T Geekdom. It looks like we have finally made it to the season finale of the sci-fi hit series Krypton, and as we conclude the first season, we hope that you've enjoyed our weekly recap and our commentary. With that being said, we present to you episode 10, The Phantom Zone, and of course, spoilers ahead. With Brainiac finally on Krypton, his ship maneuvers itself directly over Kandor City. The bottling of Kandor City is almost at hand, and no one is left to stop him. Time for a flashback. Remember when Val was sentenced to death and dropped off a precipice into the abyss? Well, before he was, he activated a portal into the Phantom Zone, which is a detour out of our space-time continuum. And that's where General Zod had been condemned to stay after being convicted of treason. There he met Val and stole from him the device that allows one to cross between dimensions, and that's how he got back. Now General Zod suggests reactivating the portal into the Phantom Zone to retrieve Val and bring him back to help them all defeat Brainiac. Somehow we think he has ulterior motives. Well, it's decided to give it a chance and they fire up the Phantom Zone projector. And it works! The Val returns. Seg is very excited to see his long-lost grandfather. He is no longer the last of the L's. However, Val comes with not such great tithings. Val regretfully tells our heroes that there's no way to stop Brainiac. Inside the Phantom Zone, Val saw all possible futures, and they all end in Krypton's destruction. As a further warning, the future in which Doomsday is used as a proxy to fight Brainiac ends in the most catastrophic of ways with the greatest loss of life. Meanwhile, Brainiac has begun the bottling of Kandor. His ship has deployed tentacles all around the city and deep into the planet. It is creating a barrier as the tentacles are releasing energy, creating a shield around the city, keeping everyone inside. We get a glimpse of one of those bottled cities again. Like a ship in a bottle, all is still inside, including the people whose energy and brain power Brainiac will use for all time. Inside one of these is Adam, who is walking around exploring this city he's found himself in. From the looks, it appears to be an Earth city. Lyda returns to see Dev. Dev is now sporting a new mechanical arm that would make the Winter Soldier jealous. After a brief talk, Dev and Lyda go to the Sagittari barracks to recruit soldiers for a counter-strike. They're all ready to throw in the towel, so Lyda makes an example of the cowardly interim captain and knocks him out with one punch. The rest of them suddenly change their minds, but alas, it's a suicide mission as Brainiac easily destroys the Sagittari skimmers. En route to Kandor City, General Zod gives Seg a peep into his plan, sacrifice Val to Brainiac in exchange for leaving the city. Val has seen many futures, and this knowledge could be very valuable to Brainiac. Seg's obviously not sold on this one, though. While the Sagittari sacrifice their lives distracting Brainiac, Seg and General Zod lead innocent civilians out of Kandor and into the underground tunnels. It's a plan that won't save everyone, but enough of them. While Seg is distracted, General Zod disappears. Back in the guild, Nisa has returned to retrieve her and Seg's child while she runs into Jax Ur. Jax is ready to kill her as one of the last remaining aristocrats of Kandor. Jax educates her on her childhood, Nisa's mother was killed in a skimmer crash, and so was Nisa. Her consciousness was implanted in another body, along with some memories. Jax Ur's scientific work could have been used to cure disease and heal sickness, but instead it was co-opted by Darren and used in his vast cloning enterprise. Ah, uh, one last deception revealed, those Kryptonians. And where did General Zod go? Well, you may have guessed it, he went to make a deal with Brainiac. As he approaches Brainiac with his offer, Brainiac decides to hear him out. As Lyda and Dev continue getting people out of Kandor, people start freezing in place. Kandor, you could say, is in a state of arrested development. Brainiac has completed the bottling dome over the city and frozen all of its people inside. Brainiac, led by General Zod, has descended upon the Fortress of Solitude. As the deal with Zod, Brainiac will acquire Val's knowledge. If that happens, Val cautions, Brainiac will be able to take over the known universe. Val gives Seg only one option. Seg must kill his grandfather. While Seg has a gun to Val's head, Brainiac knocks Seg out of the way. As Brainiac approaches Val, he suddenly discovers that it was not Val, but instead a hologram. 
Brainiac took the bait and he walked onto the platform just as Seg planned. Seg activates the Phantom Zone projector. With the real Val, Seg, and General Zod looking on, the booby trap sucks Brainiac straight to the Phantom Zone. But Brainiac's not done yet. He extends his tentacles down and grabs Seg, dragging him into the Phantom Zone with him. As Val holds on, Seg looks over and sees his grandson's cape rematerializing to full condition again. Realizing that he must sacrifice himself, he tells Val start believing in a better tomorrow again, and he lets go of Val's hand. With Brainiac in the Phantom Zone, this releases Candor of Brainiac's hold, and the people are free again. Lyda and Dev embrace, seems she's already forgotten about Seg. Val announces he can use the Phantom Zone controls to retrieve just Seg. Seeing his chance to get rid of future Superman as well, General Zod destroys the control panel with his gun. We see the Superman cape in the background with the L insignia change to a Zod insignia. Flash forward to one month later, we see General Zod has become commander of all of Krypton. He has assumed complete control and demands the other city's leaders bow to Zod, which they do. We also see Adam in one of those bottled cities as he rounds the corner of a building only to find a large statue of Zod. Seems the timeline's been changed quite a bit more than just on Kandor. So what about Doomsday? He's still underground beneath Kandor and he's just waking up. As you can see, Krypton's been picked up for season two and we're looking forward to seeing how this all turns out. Check back with us for continued updates and recaps when Krypton returns in 2019. But before you leave, please don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave us your comments. How did you feel about the season one of Krypton? Are you as excited as we are for season two? Well, unfortunately we won't know till we get there. So until then, we'll see you next time.